Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. <clears throat> Our high-level overview of Avail. My name is Adriana Schneider, and I'm the Professional Services Manager at Avail. My background is in architectural engineering. I went to school for it. I did an industry, worked at Autodesk for a minute until I moved over to the Autodesk channel and was there for almost 18 years before moving over to Avail uh, to begin their to begin the professional services department back in January. So we're gonna just dive right in. Um, when I first started here at Avail, I asked our founder and CEO, why did you develop Avail? Uh, can you tell me in just a single sentence? And really what he wanted to focus on was loose content, disconnected information. It's a growing problem in the AEC industry, and we're trying to help mediate and solve their challenges. Avail is different from other content management solutions because it was built to both be content and location agnostic. Content agnostic, this is a list of a plethora of different tools that one of our clients sent to us. It's not just about Revit or SketchUp or InDesign, or even AutoCAD. All of these tools have their own files, potential file, potentially file formats, and need to be organized, managed, maintained, and being able to find. We have the ability to do that within the Avail environment. And it really doesn't matter exactly what the type of content is or where it's located. There's another growing issue of having to share content among different platforms, whether it be SharePoint through BIM 360 for your projects, maybe you're working on OneDrive or simply on your server. We have many more locations than we did in the past on where we keep all of our content. There's a lot of different places and things just happen to get lost. It's very costly, which we don't really measure or can often measure um, what time is wasted looking for something. Not only looking for something, but what if you can't find it? Then you have to recreate it. And then where do you put it? And then who can you, who can use it outside of just yourself? There's a lot of effort um, <clears throat> to search for content on a daily basis, no matter what it is. And it just introduces a lot of errors. When we look at value drivers for the AEC industry, most of us are looking to improve operational efficiency and reduce risk. We can do this by reducing overall design time or increasing workload capacity, managing complexity and reducing error and rework, or just reducing project setup time and search time when we're working within our projects. This doesn't just have to be Revit content, whether it's families, details, or sheets but images, marketing content, anything, PDFs, um, spec sheets, anything that you need for your project throughout that project life cycle. So let's take a look at Avail. I did a presentation a few weeks back about visual acuity. Our visual input is far surpasses our verbal input. We can grasp images and pictures, understand and consume them much faster than let's say a blog post or a document explaining step-by-step -step on how something's being done versus maybe a video. So we focused a lot of our efforts on making sure that our users, which in the AEC industry are constantly looking at images, pictures, details, to be able to put together a set of drawings. And that is what we do every day. So let's continue that on as we search for our content. Avail has channels, which are basically windows into which you can see the content no matter where it's located. Whether it's my architectural details, the different families, all of this pops up as a thumbnail image that I can then preview and see much faster and easier than if I was searching for it through a container file 
or even simply in my Windows Explorer. Panels can be grouped together to be very easily accessible for a specific discipline. Maybe my electrical team, my mechanical team. Maybe I'm someone that's actually working only on building my model and that's the type of content I need. Or maybe I know that I'm gonna be needing to pull in content from a specific project. All of these can then be grouped together to be able to be found. As I mentioned, it doesn't just have to be Revit. It can also be websites, images, manuals. So whether it's a PDF, an Excel spreadsheet, or a URL, all of those are organized and stored within the avail environment as images to be able to pull. Speaking of images, let's take a look at my marketing. I have all of my rendered images within a particular channel. These are now organized by the type of building that I might be working on. I can also group this by architect or market sector. Maybe I want a hospital. I can take a look at this by location, project name, and then I can very easily find the exact item that I'm looking for. All of this metadata is used. It is gathered and pulled and be able to be used for searchability. We have channels, key cards, and then the content itself. If we're thinking from a Revit perspective, we can very easily either drag and drop or search for it within our Revit project itself. Our project navigator allows us to see all of the content, where it's located, what kind of content we have, and where it is. For example, if I need to find a particular family, maybe it's a door type of some kind. This will pull and uh, filter down to simply my doors. So maybe I just need a door opening. I can actually see where my door openings are within my project by using my instance navigator, grouping this by room, by level, or by a specific host. I can go search for that piece of content, similarly as you can do from an out of Revit, but much more easily and in a more streamlined fashion. From here, I can easily switch it to another type of door, another type of instance, or if I need to search the project for a particular door, that I cannot find, I can search for that door through Avail. It'll bring me back directly to the Avail desktop and it'll show me by the different groups. It recognizes that I'm working on a hospital and I need a healthcare door. It'll bring me to that particular channel and narrow it down from the hundreds of results that we may have down to 17 based on the project that I'm working on. From there, I can easily drag and drop into my Revit project to be able to use it into Revit. Now, whether you're using Revit or even simply creating a PowerPoint presentation. Within my PowerPoint presentation, I will simply use a blank one. I'm gonna take a look at my different images. I'm gonna build a presentation. <clears throat> I'm looking for a church. And again, I simply have the ability to drag and drop into my PowerPoint and then utilize the design ideas to begin 
putting together my presentation. This works for any tool in which you can simply drag and drop. Again, whether you're looking for Revit content or potentially detailed, this can be seen by a project manager. Perhaps they are on site and they need to provide, they realize that one of the details that are on the as built drawing is not actually the correct detail. You can very easily get a link and type that out to through an email or Slack or Teams to be able to share that with someone back in the uh, at the at the office to update update those as built drawings. And lastly, you have the ability to uh, very easily track what people are doing. So whether it is what they're searching for, either via text, which is typing in the content and searching that way, or via a tag, which are the tags down at the bottom here um, that come in both with the content as well as can be added manually. We can very easily search to see what people are searching for most often. We can see how many users are actually utilizing the tool, what content is being brought in, what is the most used content, specific file name, who our top users are, what panels are being used, from a channel activity perspective, you can see which channels are most active, which ones are being used the most and have the most actions to start potentially cleaning up the content that you have. We can look at this from a project perspective in which actually Randall is going to be presenting on November 2nd. And we can also take a look at the specific channel activity, who's going in there, what the actions are for each specific channel that we have. Mm -hmm. Although I might know exactly where to go to find my content, I potentially might not know where I need to go. So whether it be through Revit itself or maybe typing in casework to be able to find it directly from the desktop. We'll bring up the different channels and channel groups in which this content is located. I know that you'll notice that as soon as I typed in casework, we also have URLs. So you can actually pull in content from a particular website. That might be common for you to use. I know that I need to find some Revit families. That's what I'm actually looking for. So I'll go into my Revit families channel. It'll bring up my casework. And you'll notice we went from hundreds of pieces of content down to 98. That was weird. Um, I know that I want to find a um, piece of content that is a base cabinet. We bring that down now to 44. And once in here, I want a four drawer base cabinet, which brings us down to four pieces of content. I can now select this and again, drag and drop it into my Revit project. we go and be able to use it to continue building on to my project. You'll notice there are some tags here 
if I take a look at the information um, of this piece of content, go. Um, I actually flag this as needs attention. So at any point in time, if I, you know, this could be the wrong material, I can go ahead and type that in the comment or I can flag it, add a flag. It needs attention. Material is incorrect. Add this flag, and that'll now be um, under the needs attention flag here that I can go ahead and select, and it'll bring the content that is in needs attention in this channel, or I can search across all channels. And bring up all content that we have flagged and then be able to see exactly what some of those challenges are. Text is overlapping here, which we actually see is overlapping, <laughs> and modification can be made in that way. So, no matter what product you're working in, where you have your content stored, or what type of content you're actually looking for. You have the ability to search contextually as well as graphically and receive visual results to be able to find the content that you're looking for. Do we have any questions today? If you do, please feel free to either put it in the chat or the questions and answers. If there are no questions, I want to thank you so much for taking a look at Avail High Level Overview. On November 2nd, our CEO, Randall Stevens, is going to be presenting some in depth information on our data innovation, um, taking a look at the Avail Analytics 2.0. But if you're interested in hearing any more or would like to ask, questions to me or our sales director, please feel free to reach out. I want to thank you so much for joining us today, and I have a wonderful rest of your day.